part six. So it came to pass, as probes from above let the camera focus on, where spotlights ran in circles, shining white insanity along the wall, swollen, swollen crust, and fumbling about, I heard yelping and flinched at grunts from disfigured voices with a fluster of quivering bars and a bang from tin cans, hammering at the hatred being locked in their cells. So I stopped to catch my breath, but guards would push at me and growl to ignore the sounds and to count the little moments left of consciousness. And looking about, as walls grew thick and cells got tight, I wondered what he said and why would he say such a thing, but did not ask, only began to feel my heart beat at the glimpse of one of those faces displaying mechanical complexity nailed into what remained of its body. And as I came closer, I studied a spinning rod with a glass eyeball fused at the end, beaming out at me. And I recognized actual logic behind what the ghoul was gasping out through its tongueless cries and erratic behavior. And although everything had been stripped away, including memory of its species, sex, or even name, there was still thought cascading one down one straight path with no rocky currents or twist or bend or anything to lead away its pounding gravity that it was being severely starved through, through every sense throughout itself. And it was then I found myself. There was not a select few with us, but we were in the main population and I felt buried by hundreds of levels with others surrounding upon all the layers of lost souls piled up as far as the eye could reach. And I was afraid one of the ghouls might crash out of its cell and let the true color shine through, but got interrupted from thought when guards tugged at my handcuffs and lifted them above my head, and I felt a surge of pain, like they were going to rip my limbs from my shoulders, and I started to shake as if I had a chill I couldn't lose. So, and suddenly I came tumbling to my feet and I chattered out that I couldn't move and that I didn't want to play the infernal game anymore and that I was tired of being beaten and I was tried to plead with them but they didn't listen and I started to be dragged down cold cement and began to roll in a spiral down the staircase and just as I was about to blank out I was revived with a boot to my groin and I found along with the sensation piercing into my stomach a shriveled up hag who extended her finger from her hand to taunt me that there was no way out and began to recite annoying jargon of mishmash documents stating some prophecy that sounded like a death penalty. And when she was finally finished her long drawn out babble, the guards walked me out and I laughed to myself. How stupid I can be, as I remembered the truth to what would happen, and I began to smile from cheek to cheek, and I gazed at them, and I saw past their despair, and I saw past their pain, and I saw meat all lined up like herds of stupid cattle, and just waited for their slaughter, and that was my part in the story I had forgotten, and soon, oh so soon, would my purpose appear to not only myself, but everyone all across the land, foreign or domestic, through rain, sleet, or snow, to lucid purity, that I'm going to kill everyone because they all deserve it, for whatever it may be. And a keyhole of light in the distance took my total attention and lasered down the block as big as waves that drowned the earth and looked like an incredible flame glowing larger and larger till suddenly I was caught within it and swallowed up. And I tried to keep my eyes shut, but the light was too much. And I made myself watch myself fade out to nothing.